Hey guys, and welcome to the next video of lockdown hobbies, I suppose. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a, another hobby that is a very unconventional kind of hobby, and that is making chainmail. And you'd be surprised how easy it is to do, because you can make this from this. This is simple garden wire. Uh, it's galvanized wire, but it doesn't need to be galvanized. I'm, I'm, I, have, I have heard it's actually better if it's not, but just a two millimeter uh, steel wire, and that's pretty much all you need uh, in terms of the material, anyway. So, how do you get that? How do you go from that to this? Well, first of all, what you need to do is you need to get yourself a tube or some sort of dowel. You know, I wouldn't use wood because it might be a bit too weak. Drill a hole in the one end, about give it give it about an inch from the end. You insert that into a drill. Uh, you insert the end of the wire. I haven't got a loose one to show you with at the moment. Uh, insert that in there, and then you hold in your thumb against it so that it bends along with the tube and then you turn the drill very slowly so that it slowly turns the tube and because your thumb is here and I'd wear like a, a really thick leather glove when doing this or some sort of protective glove and it'll slowly wrap around into a coil now I did have a coil to show you but I recently cut, chopped it up already so this is what you get once you once it forms a coil you can then use a pair of snips like these and you chop a ring you chop in a single line right up the coil and it forms these little rings and you can see when you cut them they're kind of half they're kind of like half set like that so they're, they're already open-ish but what you want to do is once you've got these rings you then want to use a pair of pliers and then you want when the autofocus catches up you want to divide them up into five and then open one so we want five we do so if I get so that was one and then let's get four more so they see these out of the way so these are our five rings so we've opened one and then what you want to do is you want to take the other four and you want to close them all so I'm going to do now is close that Yeah, it's a very tedious hobby, this, and it's going to be very boring to watch, quite frankly, but uh, it's somewhat nice to do while, do while watching or doing something else. Especially when I always have the urge to do this when I'm watching something like Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings or something. But anyway, so now we've got our four rings that are closed, so they are complete rings now. And what you want to do is this uh, we're going to be making what's called European four in one pattern, which is what we've got. This is what this is by here. So what you want to do is you want to take your four rings and you want to put them into the open one. And then you want to close it. And that oh and it's landed perfectly. All right. And that is a European 4-in-1 pan. And now what you want to do is, you want to do that a few more times. So I'll do it once more. And uh, the way you want to lay them out, by the way, is if you hold them like that, so you've got two rings inside the, the middle single one, and then lay them out so that the two rings you're holding fall flat one way 
and the middle ring for lays flat the other direction so like that so you've got these they're kind of going up that way and the middle ring is going up this way and now if we match these two together like that now this is where you have a bit of a choice now of how you want to build up your pattern where you can either connect them by opening a single ring and inserting it through if I try and I will probably crop in at this point you want to insert it through right through here because basically what you want to be doing is you want to mimic what these rings are doing in these individual pans right here and what you want to do is you want to try and insert it through in between these two in between these two rings here so right in the middle so can I, I'm trying to make it so that you can see it clearly so about there so I'm going to use this to lift that one up move that one out of the way from that so you should have it like that so this is so right now, if, you, if I hold it up, so it's pretty much like that now. So you've got our two rings we started with in the middle one, and we've added another one, but the same as with the middle one we just had. And then bring our other side in, and you want to bring these two together, and you want to loop the one we just added through them. And then we're going to close it, and this is going to be very difficult to show you, but you know, you know what it looks like when you close, when you close a ring. Okay, and now you have, now it, with this method you now have a chain, and if we, put them, if we lay them out, you can see we've got the makings of a pan. But what you can also do is, you can take, if I grab another five, what you can also do is you can add them, along this direction as well more or less in the same way so there so we got that and then we make another four in one another four in one pattern close it so there we've got so there we've got our four in one and you're gonna lay it down in the same because you want to be looking at the pattern of them and you want to try and match this pattern with the one you're trying to connect it to and the way this is going to work going this way is that these two are, are lying flat up that way you want these to match that and what you want is you want the front of these two to kind of overlap these two but anyway, you can see now, so you, uh, hopefully you can see on the camera, you've got four rings here, four rings here, and you've got two in the middle. The idea being now is we want to add another, we want to add another ring in between these two middle ones. But it's a bit awkward now doing it this way, because now this uh, ring, it's got to go between these two rings here. So if I point it out, it's a bit easier. It's got to go between these two here so it's got to go i've moved it it's got to go right in between through there and between these two here right through there yeah i'm pretty sure you didn't i didn't make that clear at all never mind screw it so we go through like that and, oh. yeah this is very awkward there's a reason I call this heavy metal knitting. And loop it through. So now we've got it looped through. So you can see, you can see we've got the uh, original two middle rings here, right? Yeah, uh, I'm, trying to, yeah, I'm trying to make sure my fingers aren't hiding anything. Uh, middle two rings here, and then we've got this one, which is supposed to be mimicking what they are doing. Gonna raise it up and make sure we don't no rings fall out of our ring and there. And now we've mixed it all up, but now we just lay it all out. 
12 feet. There we are. So now we've got a little L shape. And you just keep doing that until you get a small sheet of, say, if you count each of these as one unit, each of the four in ones, you want to have it about five by, no, let's say four by four. So, so right now we've got two here and two there, so we'd add another one, and then do another three patches, and then move on and make another one, and then you connect them, and then once you connect them, you could start, you'd guess something like this then. And that would be a four, that would be a medieval four in one pattern. And this, uh, just, just a little disclaimer by the way, this is not, uh, this is not going to be battle ready armor, this is not going to protect you very much. I mean, this, holding this on your hand, you won't be able to cut yourself with a blade, like by slicing, like that. Don't think though, don't go making this and thinking it's going to be a, like stab protection, because that's not what chainmail is really good at really and especially not this one because this stuff is it's known as butted chainmail which is what we've been doing you know we've been just closing the rings but we haven't been actually sealing them closed by either welding is it gonna focus on there we go we haven't been welding them closed or riveting them or anything like that these will open if enough force is applied if enough force is applied to them like that, they will be forced open and whatever's going in there will actually, you know, penetrate. So do not make this thinking I am trying to show you how to make actual protective equipment because it won't protect you, okay? However, for things like cosplay, LARP, or like uh, medieval recreation things, or even just making costume armor of any kind, this is brilliant for that because it doesn't take that too much time to make if you're dedicated enough to actually doing it. Like you can produce a sheet like this right here within an hour, I mean easily. And I am working on a shirt, but I'm very, very sort of intermittent with how often I do this, so it's taken me years just to get like, essentially a crop, a chainmail crop top, so. But um, yeah, this is not the only thing you can do, by the way, because you don't have to make sheets of this either. I mean, I just um, just want to show you an example for a minute of uh, another kind of sheet. But this is this is eight in two. So this is exactly the same as what we've done here, only this is doubling up on the rings and also doubling the size of the rings as well. These are twice, no, actually, I don't think they're twice the size. Um, it's the same gauge of wire, but they're about an extra half. I was using a thicker tube to wind around, and you just get two rings, and then you insert two open rings. You insert f um, eight normal rings, and then you lay them flat, and you do the exact same pattern as this. And it looks quite cool, I think. You know, it's just I had to find a use for the bigger rings because doing the normal four-in-one pattern with the these um, much wider rings, it didn't look good. But anyway, you know, back to where I was try was actually going on. Anyway, um, you don't need to make sheets out of this or even you know medieval kind of armor stuff. Either way, chain mailing is actually used all the time. You know, in modern day, primarily in jewelry making or watch strap making. And I'm just going to show you an example here of an attempt I made at making something so jewelry. I didn't want to make something that was too simple, like because you can make um, jewelry out of what we just uh, did here. You know, cause all, all you would do really is you would just make this make this pattern here long enough to go around your wrist, and then maybe strengthen it with some extra rings around the sides or smaller rings around the sides and then you've got a, a, a pretty decent strap wouldn't um bet that it would hold up to much stress you know if you know with your if your wrist is expanding or tension being applied to it or not but you know still the thing but these rings are a bit big for doing things like uh, jewelry crafting uh, these these are the kind of rings you really want uh, maximum I'd say and here's something I made before this is 
using a dra I think it was called a, a dragon weave pattern. Let's see if it's going to focus on it. Come on, there we go. This was a um, well, this is an incomplete dragon scale. I think it was a dragon scale pattern or something like that. But um, I'll try and find a link. I'll try and find the image I used to learn this because I learned it off a website. And this is a bracelet I've made out of it. And uh, the reason I made it into a bracelet and I say it's incomplete is because you see this ridge back kind of uh, pattern. Where am I going? There we are. You see this ridge back kind of pattern that's going up the center of it? That isn't on the inside because normally you would apply that to see each, where each of these rings are touching each other. That's where you would apply another ridge and that would make this straight. But um, as you can see, this holds its. Um, it holds that sort of curve on its own because these rings I think were a bit too small f uh, or they were a bit too a higher gauge for this pattern but I kind of liked the way it kind of held its uh, shape and you know I think I reckon that looks kind of cool but uh, I haven't closed it yet because I haven't found a clasp that I like for it yet but uh, that's uh, that's just, just uh, it's just a way of showing that uh, you don't need to make armor or medieval stuff out of chainmail. Chainmailing is still used today for jewelry craft and everything like that, really. The only things you need, the only things you need to do this is this, which I think I you can pick this up for like between two and four pounds in uh, any DIY shop. Um, one thing I would say though is don't, I wouldn't use aluminium because aluminium, if right, the it's a bit weak aluminium is so the, the way I usually gauge it right is when you're holding it in the shop grab the end of it if you struggle to bend the very first inch of it so yeah there so I managed to bend like past the inch but if you struggle to bend any amount of the wire within that first inch then it's probably then it'll work. If you if you can easily just bend it and like wrap it around your finger, it's it's way too weak to be doing this. You know, to be making medieval armor because it will not. But w once you've get gotten like a full sheet of it and you try to hold it up, it won't support its own weight and the rings will start to, to separate. But anyway, like I said, uh, all you need you need that. You need a nice pair of clippers. You don't necessarily need the drill. You can, because you can do it with this. If you had this, and then a decent handle at the one end, like, um, or even just like a, a bar going through it, so you can turn it like that, and you can hold your thumb to it like that, and you just turn them like that. You can do it by hand, so you don't necessarily need the drill. The drill makes it faster and a bit easier, though. So I'd say all you need is move that out of the way. All you need is the wire. You need a dowel to wrap it around. A pair of clippers and two two um, pliers. And that that is all you need to have a go at this. So I hope you found this interesting, at least even slightly. And I hope you consider having a go at it because it is quite it is quite cool. And like I said, it is tedious and it makes your hands smell if you use galvanized uh, steel. But, I mean, it's something to do. We've all got pl uh, plenty of free time now, and who knows, if you stick to it long enough, you may even have your own set of chainmail armour that you can show off and do whatever with. So, uh, last time I'm going to say it, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the description, and please leave any questions you have in there as well. And I shall see you in the next video.